Hey guys, Andy Raphael from eTechnics.com here and this week we've seen the launch of AMD's second generation Ryzen processors and with it the X470 chipset. So up next in the test bench is the X470 Tai Chi Ultimate from ASRock. The X470 chipset offers more PCIe lanes along with better memory support with faster frequencies and lower power consumption. It supports the newest 12 nanometer pinnacle ridge based processors and when combined with them offers new functionality and performance increases through several new features. These include XFR2, Precision Boost 2 and Store MI technology. This all combines to aim X470 based components squarely at the higher end enthusiast market. When we unbox the X470 Tai Chi Ultimate we find the usual assortment of guides along with a driver CD, two Wi-Fi antennas, an M.2 mounting screw, four SATA cables, the rear I.O. panel shield plate, and an SLI HP bridge. Built on an ATX form factor, the board has a two ounce copper PCB, finished in matte black with subtle shades of gray, giving it a kind of stealthy look that combines professionalism with style. Covering the PCH is a cool looking symbol with a cog and gear based theme. This is lit with customizable LEDs. Talking about lighting, we have three lighting zones in total. One on the rear I.O. shroud, one on the chipset heatsink, and one on the audio shroud. All lighting is fully RGB and is controlled through the ASRock Polychrome RGB software, which offers the usual variety of patterns and colors, and can also match the onboard lighting with external strips if desired. The CPU socket supports all AM4 based processors, including the latest Pinnacle Ridge second gen AMD Ryzen desktop CPUs. The Tai Chi Ultimate features an IR digital 16 power phase PWM design, which should assist in overclocking and gives maximum headroom for the processor. Compared to traditional designs, the premium 60 amp power chokes provide cleaner and more stable power to the V-Core. To provide that power, we have an eight pin and a four pin connector where you'd expect them, along with a standard 24 pin. The board also includes Nichicon 12K black capacitors, which not only look great with the board styling, but also add at least another 2000 hours to the lifespan of the board, along with providing more stability and reliability overall. For your heat dissipation needs, we have an extra large aluminium alloy heatsink around the CPU socket, which redirects heat efficiently from the chipset and MOSFETs. This heatsink blends nicely into the IO armor, designed to reduce the possibility of damage to the board from static discharges. The symbol covering the PCH also doubles as a very nice looking heatsink, and there is another heatsink covering the audio components of the board, which carry on the design from the IO armor above. The copper design of the PCB is also intended to aid in heat reduction, and being exceptionally conductive, it does offer a higher overall efficiency when overclocking. The Tai Chi Ultimate supports 64 gig of dual channel DDR4 memory, with speeds of up to 3466 MHz, and it contains four DIMM slots to put it in. Just like the CPU, power to the memory is delivered via premium alloy chokes, thus delivering more stable and reliable power. The onboard bank of controls sport a clear CMOS button and a debug LED, along with power and reset buttons which are nicely finished in a gold surround for that extra premium vibe. ASRock provide us with five fan headers in total, one near the eight and four pin power connectors, two above the memory slots, one to the right of the memory slots, and one at the bottom of the board. Four of these five can also double as water pump fan connectors if required. We also have HD audio, a TPM header, and front panel headers. There are also two pairs of RGB LED headers, one at the bottom of the board next to the TPM header, and another in the center of the board. Each pair has a non-addressable header and an addressable header. There are eight SATA 3 ports to cater to your storage device needs, a number that should be more than ample. We can also find a USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type-C connector, two USB 3.0 ports, one horizontally mounted and one vertically mounted, which is pretty neat, and two USB 2.0 ports for older devices. For M.2 support, there is one PCIe Gen 3 X4 slot supporting type 22110 devices with a built-in heatsink, and one PCIe Gen 2 X4 slot supporting 2280 devices, but sadly with no built-in heatsink this time. In terms of expansion slots, we have two armored PCIe 3.0 X16 slots, one of which operates at X16 speeds and one at X8 speeds one unarmored PCIe 2.0 X16 slot, which operates at X4 speeds, 
and two PCIe 2.0 X1 slots. The board does also support AMD Crossfire X and Nvidia SLI. It should be noted that when the unarmored PCIe 2.0 slot is occupied, the Gen 2 M.2 slot will be disabled. Moving on to the rear I.O., we have two Wi-Fi antenna ports linked to an Intel 802.11 dual band AC Wi-Fi module with Bluetooth 4.2 support. There are six USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports, another clear CMOS button, and a HDMI port, meaning that AMD Raven Ridge APUs with their Vega graphics can be utilized in this board without the need for a dedicated graphics card. We also find two RJ45 Ethernet ports, one of which is Gigabit LAN capable through the Intel i211AT controller. The other is 10 GBE capable through the Aquantia AQC107 controller. This is a first for consumer level boards. There is also a PS2 keyboard mouse combo port, which I still don't understand. Along with this, there are two USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports, one type A and one type C. We also have an optical audio SP diff output and five HD audio jack ports, which offer 7.1 channel HD audio through the Realtek ALC1220 audio codec. ASRock group their hardware and software audio technology under the name Purity Sound 4. This incorporates individual PCB layers for the right and left audio channels, 120 decibel SNR DAC, gold audio connectors, Nichicon Fine Gold Series Audio Capacitors, and an NE5532 Premium Headset Amplifier for the front panel audio connector. Design and features aside, we have to look at the overclocking potential. With this board paired with the Ryzen 7 2700X, we managed to push it to 4.2 gigahertz at 1.4 volts. You might be able to push it a little bit further if you had better cooling, but we were using the cooler that comes supplied with the processor, the Wraith Prism, which is fantastic for a stock cooler anyway. But now let's take a look at the performance and see how this board did in our benchmarks. At around £250 in the UK and $300 in the US, this board is a little more expensive than some of its rivals, but you do get some cool features. 10 GBE Ethernet port, the SLI HB bridge, plenty of storage ports, and a bitching cool design. If you're going to combine this board with a Pinnacle Ridge based second gen Ryzen CPU, the extra features and performance you'll be able to capitalize on through the X470 chipset will definitely make this a good buy. That's all for today guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video and I've got to admit out of all the boards I've been looking at this is definitely one of my favourites. Hopefully you think so too. Until next time I'll see you in the next video, see you later.